Hi, this is Pam from Wood Camber Crafts, where all of my crochet patterns are inspired by nature. Well, except for this one, today we are making the modern retro washcloth. I love these because they remind me of washcloths I had as a kid. But I've updated them a little, made them look a little more modern. You can see we have a cool ribbed pattern on one side, and then they're nice and soft on the other side for your face. In this video, I'm using Loops and Threads Bulky Twist Yarn. It is a bulky or five weight yarn and it's 50% cotton and 50% acrylic. If you'd prefer to use 100% cotton yarn, you can do that as well. I like the blend though because it's still absorbent, but it dries a little bit faster and it's much easier to work with. You will also need a five millimeter crochet hook, stitch markers, darning needle, and some scissors. If you're looking for a written copy of this pattern, I will be posting it on my website, woodcampercrafts.com. We're going to start with a simple slip knot. So pull your yarn through and then just pull tight. Insert your hook and pull tight again. Now we're ready to start. We're gonna start by chaining 21. So yarn over and pull through. There's your first chain, yarn over and pull through. Your second chain, yarn over and pull through. That's three. I'll let you work on this on your own. You're doing 21 in total and I'll meet you back here when you're all done. I finished chaining 21. Now we're going to flip over the chain because we're going to be working on the back side of the chain. So if you look at the chain here, normally you work in just that top loop there. So there and there, but we're going to be working in just that back bump or that horizontal loop. So just right here and right here. And the reason we're doing this is because it creates a nice clean edge. So there we go, just that horizontal back bump right there. So not here. We're going to be working in that back bump right here. So now you know the placement of your hook. We're ready to get started. So I'm just going to put my hook back on here. And once again, we're working on the back side of the chain. And we're going to start in the second bump. So there's the first one. We're not working in there. We're working in that second bump. So insert your hook. And you might have to give it a helping hand here. I sometimes use my nail a little bit. There we go. And we're just doing a single crochet. So yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. So I'm going to pause here. I am using stitch markers, which I highly recommend for this video. So I'm going to put a stitch marker on the first stitch in the row, and then we're going to keep going here. So there's my next bump. I'm going to insert my hook and I'm just doing a single crochet. So yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And I'm going to keep going. There's that next bump or horizontal loop. And I'm just doing a single crochet. So yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So I'm going to let you work on this on your own. You're doing 20 single crochets in total. And that's because we started in the second bump there. So you can work on this on your own and I will meet you at the end of the row and we will do the last one together. I'm at the end of row one. 
you can see there's our last bump or horizontal loop and I'm going to insert my hook. Because it's close to the knot, it is a little tighter and maybe a little more difficult to get your hook in there, but just be patient, you can do it. And I'm just gonna do my final single crochet. And this is what it looks like when you finish row one. You can see by working in that back bump, you've created a nice clean edge. So at the end of every row, we are going to chain one and turn. In row two, we're doing single crochets working in the back bump. Before we get started, I'm going to show you the placement of your hook. Normally, you would place your hook under the front and back loop of the stitch. So just here, and you'd place your hook here. But we're gonna work in that back bump, which is just that single horizontal loop behind your single crochet. So there's your back bump, and we're gonna be inserting our hook just under there. And you can just see that single horizontal loop behind your single crochet, so there, all the way along. So now you know the placement of your hook. We're ready to get started. So in row two, we are going to do a single crochet in the first and last stitch in the row. So here's our first single crochet. And then I'm going to pause here and I'm going to place a stitch marker on that first stitch in the row. Now in the next 18 stitches, I'm doing a single crochet but working in that back bump. So look at the stitch from the top, you can see the front and back loop, and then look behind it and you can see that back bump. So insert your hook under the back bump only. It is definitely harder to do this on camera, it's not that hard to do this. There we go, and we're just doing a single crochet. And then I'm gonna continue on, find that back bump, look at it from the top, and then identify that back bump, insert your hook. And also with the cotton yarn, it does separate more than acrylic yarn, um, so it is a little bit more difficult to work with. Whoops, you can see right there, I didn't go under all the loops. So we'll try that again. And that's gonna happen when you're working with the cotton yarn, don't get frustrated. So there we go, just pull out the stitch and start again. There we go, and just a single crochet. Now find that back bump, you can look at it from the top, identify the back bump, and then insert your hook under that back bump only. And as I said before, you can use your nail to help you, but it is a lot easier to do um, when you're not doing it on camera. <laughs> there we go, another single crochet. So we're gonna continue doing this all the way along in the next 18 stitches. I will meet you at the end of the row and we'll do the last two stitches together. We're at the end of the row and I'm going to do the last two stitches with you. So just working under the back bump here, we are doing the single crochet. So the last stitch in the row is just gonna be a regular single crochet. When you're doing this, just make sure that you don't work in the back bump and then do a single crochet or you will end up with too many stitches in your row. So make sure you don't work in that back, last back bump. And you also may wanna count every once in a while to make sure you still have 20 stitches in your row. So we've completed the row. At the end of every row, we are going to just chain one and we're going to turn. We're ready to start row three. In row three, we're doing 
single crochets in the next 20 stitches. Just a regular single crochet working under both the front and the back loop. So there's our first single crochet and we are going to pause here and place our stitch marker on the first stitch in the row. And then we're going to continue on. We are doing single crochets and we are doing 20 in total. And I'll let you work on this on your own and then I will just meet you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row two. I just have one single crochet to do to complete the row. I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I'm going to do a single crochet in the last stitch in the row. And then at the end of every row, I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm ready to start row four. So in the first stitch, we are just doing a single crochet. I'm going to pause here and I'm going to place a stitch marker on the first stitch in the row. In the next 18 stitches, I'm working in that back bump. So look at it from the top and then look behind, identify that back bump, and we're inserting our hook under the back bump. So just that single horizontal loop behind your single crochet. And we're just doing a single crochet. So I'm gonna continue doing this. I'm doing single crochets working in the back bump only in the next 18 stitches. And then the last stitch in the row is a single crochet. Remember when you're working this row that you want to make sure that you end up with only 20 stitches in the row. So make sure in that last stitch you're not working in the back bump and the final stitch. So you're skipping the last bump and you're doing a single crochet in the last stitch in the row. So now you know how to do this. You can work on this on your own. So you're just repeating rows two and three until you have 20 rows in total. So the last row you're going to do is just like this one here, where you're working in the back bump. So once you've finished your 20 rows, I will meet you back here and I'll show you how to do the border. So I'm at the end of row 20 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chain eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to take my washcloth and I'm just going to flip it over here. And then if you look at the single crochets along the top, I'm going to insert my hook into that first single crochet. And I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So insert your hook. And I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete the slip stitch. And there you go. We're working along the top of our final row and we're doing yarn over slip stitches. So yarn over and insert your hook into the same stitch we just worked in. And then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. You'll probably have to pause right here. I find it easier if you kind of push out that middle stitch with your finger to help you pull through all the stitches on your hook 
to complete your slip stitch. So we're going to do that again. So find your stitch we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull through the stitch. We're going to pause here for a moment. Use your finger to push out that middle stitch so you can get behind it and then turn your hook as you pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through the stitch. Pause here a moment. Use your finger to push out the middle loop so you can get behind it. Turn your hook and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. So we're going to keep going, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through the stitch. Pause here a moment, push out that middle loop so you can get behind it and turn your hook. Pull your hook through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. So I'm going to let you work on this on your own. You're doing the yarn over slip stitch and you're doing 20 in total and I will meet you at the end of the row. So now we're working down the side of our washcloth. You'll remember there were 20 rows in our washcloth. So we're placing our hook at the top of every row. So here's our first row. We're going to insert our hook at the top. There's our next row. And there's a row here. And the ribbing just at the top of the ribbing. So just find a hole at the top. You don't have to be exact. And then right here, it's hard to insert your hook. So just put it to the left there. And then you can see at the top of this row, there's a natural hole you can stick your hook in. And then at the top of the ribbing here, you can't really put your hook in there. So we're just going to go to the left of it. And the next one here, there's kind of a natural hole you can put your hook into. So now you know the placement of your hook. And we're going to do yarn over slip stitches again and we're doing 20 in total because we're going at the top of every row and we have 20 rows in total. So insert your hook, yarn over, and you're pulling through all the loops on your hook. Pause here. Use your finger to push out that middle loop so you can get behind it. And then pull through all the loops on your hook. So you can see the ribbing there. We can't get our hook at the top there. So we're going to go just to the side of it. There's a big hole. So it's easy place to stick your crochet hook. So right here. And then we're going to yarn over again. Pause here, push out that middle loop so we can get behind it. And we're going to keep going. You can see at the top of the next row, there's kind of a natural hole. Yarn over, insert your hook yarn over and pull through pause for a moment push out that middle loop so you can get behind it and pull through all the loops to complete your yarn over slip stitch so at the top of that ribbing you can't really put your hook in there so just go to the side of it there's a big hole so now you know the placement of your hook working along this edge here so we're doing yarn over slip stitches. We are doing 20 in total, and I will meet you at the end of the row. We're ready to start the third side. So if we look at it from the top, this was the original chain. And you can see there's loops here, like a front and back loop. So we're just going to be working under those and we're doing 20 yarn over slip stitches in total. So I'm going to start by yarning over, inserting my hook under that first stitch there. You can see there's a front and a back loop. They're a little tighter on the side, so definitely a little harder to get your hook in. And then yarn over and pull through. Pause for a moment, push out that middle loop and pull through all the loops to complete your yarn over slip stitch. 
So we're going to continue working along this side here, yarn over, insert your hook under the front and back loop of the next stitch. It's a little tight, so just be patient. Yarn over and pull through. And then pause here, push out that middle loop so you can get behind it and continue on. So just remember we are doing 20 yarn over slip stitches in total. I'll let you work on this side on your own and I will meet you at the end of the row. So this is the last side we're working down we're doing yarn over slip stitches and we're doing it 20 times. So find each row, find a hole at the top of the row and insert your hook. So this is a little different than the other side, but there are natural holes along the top. So it's pretty easy to figure out where to place your hook. So remember there were 20 rows in our washcloth and we are inserting our hook at the top of every row. You can see there's a natural hole there, so we're gonna work at the top here. So this time it's kind of to the right of that ribbing instead of to the left of it. So that's two, yarn over, and then you can see there's these big holes, so it's really easy to tell where to put your hook there. And we're just doing our yarn over slip stitch. And then at the top of the next row, you can see there is a hole, it's a little smaller, but it's there, just to the right of that ribbing. And then continuing along here, you can see there's that big hole, so that's easy to identify where to put your hook. And then we'll do one more here together, so you can see there is a hole at the top, it's a little smaller in between those two big holes. So you can continue along this final side. We're doing yarn over slip stitches and we are doing 20 in total. We're now back to where we started and we are going to do single crochets. We're doing 12 of them in total around our chain. So insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull through the chain. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your first single crochet. Now you're gonna to wanna to tighten that up and push your single crochet down to the bottom and we're ready to do our next one. Insert your hook in the middle of the chain, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your second single crochet. Tighten it up and push it down. Now insert your hook into the middle of the chain, yarn over and pull through the chain. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your third single crochet. Tighten it up and push it down, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through both loops. Whoops, if that happens, you can just undo that. That's gonna happen when you're working with cotton yarn. Okay, let's try that again, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, pull through. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through both loops. So we're gonna continue doing this all the way along and we are doing 12 single crochets in total. And we just have one more single crochet to make 12. So we're all done here. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the first stitch in the row. So just right there. And we're going to insert our hook and we're doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch.
I've cut the end of my yarn and now I'm just going to pull it through that final loop and pull tight to knot. So my final step is weaving in my ends. I'm just going to pull the needle through. I've worked under a few stitches in one direction and then I'm going to turn around and work back through a few of the stitches in the opposite direction. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. If you did like this video, it really helps me out if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more free videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel.